Shalom Aleichem. Welcome, everyone. This is a tribute to Dr. Zev Zelenko, Olova Shalom. I'd like to share a little history and background to understand the person. Dr. Zelenko was born in Kiev in 1973. His parents moved to America in 1978. In March of 78, they came. He attended, they settled in Brooklyn, in Shipshit Bay section of Brooklyn. They got involved uh, with Rabbi Cohn of Chabad of Shipshit Bay. Zev attended the public schools, graduated high school, and uh, went to Hofstra University to undergraduate school. From there, he proceeded to uh, Buffalo University Medical School. It was around this time in 19, early 1990s, where he had an opportunity to go to Eretz Yisrael for a month or so. Before this, he, Zeb says in his own words that he was an atheist. Um, I'm not sure exactly if that's 100% true, but at least he felt like an atheist. He, didn't, he was a very smart young man, bright, and um, questioned what he saw and didn't have an answer. In interviewing other people and in speaking with his parents during a shiva, uh, his father said to me that when he went to visit him in Buffalo, because after all he paid his bills, he saw that, um, he said, what, what are you studying? What are you doing, you know? So he said that, uh, let, let me tell you, he takes him into the lab and shows him uh, these boxes, uh, he opens up and there's a heart in one and a lung in another. And he, uh, he says, I, I, I identify, you know, I see a body, I see, I see part of, parts of a body, a heart, a lung. And that made an impression on his father because he saw he's actually becoming a doctor to an understanding the human anatomy. But what was still missing was the soul. Where was the soul? And his father said to me that he said, he said to his father at that time, you know, where's the soul? They talk about a soul, where is it? Anyway, the trip to Eretz was very impactful on him. And uh, he became more interested in Judaism and Torah. He came back to America and he met Rabbi Gorari of Chabad in Buffalo and Rabbi Herschel Greenberg. And he became actually quite close to Rabbi Greenberg. Rabbi Greenberg is, of course, a massive Torah scholar. And Rabbi Greenberg told him, listen, you know, we have a yeshiva. They had a Chabad yeshiva there at the time. Why don't you give you room and board and, 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 and study Torah? And, and he, while, you know, while you're in university, you know, take some time. And, and he did that for a while. And that's how he got more involved in his Jewishness. Rabbi Greenberg told him, you know, that it would be good if you go back to Eretz Yisrael and study in the yeshiva. And he it connected him to Rabbi Shneir Zalman Gafni, who had a yeshiva in Kfar Chabad. And he became very close to Rabbi Gafni to the point where he wanted to drop out of medical school and become a rabbi. <laughs> and he told his parents that he would like to do that, but he asked them a question, would you still pay my, the bills, the loans that I took? And they said, uh, no, you're a big boy, you're 21. And uh, if you wanna do this, we're not for it. We want you to continue finishing uh, your, your school and, and become a doctor. We, you, you've invested so much, we've paid so much, and you know, and then you're good at it. So, and he went to the Rabbi Gafni. What does Rabbi Gafni say? His, his rabbi, his teacher, his mashpia. Rabbi Gafni said, the Jewish world has plenty of rabbis. The Jewish world doesn't have enough doctors. 
And Rabbi Gaffney is the one who told him, go back, finish medical school, and become a doctor. And he listened. You have to understand that, uh, you know, the Russian Jew, the Russian Jews are very strong, you know, with their opinions. And, um, you know, for them to, uh, to accept, like, you know, someone else telling him to do something when they really want to do something else is, is not easy. But because of his great respect for Rabbi Gaffney, he did that. And he came back, and he finished school, and he does his residency as a South Shore at South Shore Medical Center in the Long Island. And I believe in 2004, he becomes a doctor in the Curious Row, Yoel, Joel Monroe area in upstate New York, known for the large Satmar community there. So from 2004 to 2019, he was there, and he was kind of the doctor to go to. I recall around that time, uh, I reached out to him for something, I forget. And um, at that time, there was you know, issues uh, in, in the Satmar community between the two factions. And, and uh, Zev told me that he, you know, near his clinic or in his clinic, he made like a shul area, a learning area, and a lot of people were fed up with the you know, arguments and all of that, they would find comfort there. And meanwhile, he as a Chabadnik exposed them to, you know, uh, to Chabad Hasidus and the Rebbe and things like that. But all in a, you know, not, not imposing, but just in, a, in an opportuni opportunistic way. So he, he, he lives his, his, his Jewishness. He becomes an Orthodox Jew, an observant Jew, a Chassid, a Lubavitcher Chassid. And in yeshiva, he becomes a very good student, in yeshiva and post-yeshiva, he becomes a very good student of Hasidus. In fact, he's written several works uh, in English, uh, Hasidus, Essence to Essence, and some others, in addition to his professional uh, writings and authorship. And uh, he, he really um, understood the anatomy of the soul. It took him, you know, years, but he got there. He, found me, he finally found God. He finally found the neshama. He finally found the soul. And he finally found his true happiness. He married, he had six children. And... Um, then came COVID, 2019, March, COVID explodes, and Dr. Zelenko becomes world famous in discovering a cure known as the, pro the Zelenko Protocol. I myself am a recipient and a benefactor from this. And not only is it I, but thousands and maybe millions of people benefited from that. And there was a lot of rhetoric and a lot of red tape. And even though the President of the United States at the time, President Trump spoke about it, and he said that he himself took it without mentioning Dr. Zelenko's name, the wolves got to him and uh, stopped the, the excitement and importance of taking the Zelenko protocol to the point that the community, the Sakra community in Kiris Yo, the, the leadership, part of the leadership, felt that um, the accusations that were thrown at Dr. Zelenko and his approach, that it didn't have verification and research and study, caused them to, to say, look, we know that you saved thousands of people here. And I think on, on record, only three people died in all of, all of uh, Curious Joe, even though the pandemic hit there like wildfire. Nevertheless, uh, they said, we can't, we can't have you, you know, promote this and, uh, in our community because uh, we're getting national attention and, and it's not good for us. And at that point, he said, okay, if that's the case, I'm leaving. And he closed up his office there and he moved to uh, Pomona in, uh, near Muncie, upstate New York, actually in Rockland County. And from there, 
he transferred out to Florida where the environment the atmosphere is more receptive to Dr. Zelenko and his protocol and everything else that he represents. In 2018, he had been diagnosed with uh, Yena Machla with ca cancer of the lung and uh, they removed the uh, lung and he was on his way to healing. But unfortunately, God had other plans and he passed on last week. However, what he did for the world and what for Claudius role for Jews is on record. It's on record and it continues to help people. They have now the, the vitamins in the capsule form and they have a subscription to that. Zev was a very, very strong-willed person. I recall talking to him about this like a year ago in 2021, and he was very emphatic. You know, the, the vaccines were totally not healthy and good in his opinion. But he said it with a lot of strength and power, just looking at me right in my face. And when I kind of challenged him, questioned him, you know, he just shot back and he says, if you want to die, do this. <laughs> you know, he, he, he was very forceful, but that was Zev. And it's because of his strong character, strong will that got him to the point of becoming a religious Jew, a chassid, a Lubavitcher chassid. And it got him through medical school and it got him then later to help thousands of people in Kyrgyz, Yol, and in that area, and many others worldwide. In fact, Rabbi Gaffney became very ill, and he flew him here. He paid for him to come. He took care of him. Rabbi Gaffney is almost 90 years old, and he lives in Tzfas, Tzfas Israel, Eretz Israel, and he's well. Zev saved his life. He saved his Rebbe's teacher's life, and he paid for it. And he supported him. The chesed, the kindness of Zev is, is unknown by many. But in my research, he quietly has supported mikvahs, Sefer, Sefer Torah, Torah scrolls, and many other things, Chabad houses. There's no question that Dr. Zev Zelenko, Zelenko will be remembered for eternity will go down in the annals of world history, American history, as a hero. As someone who stood up to the administration, to the establishment, spoke his mind, and gave us life. May God bless him and his family. They shall only have simchas, happy occasions. Yiddish and Hasidish and Nachas. And ultimately, the neshama of Dr. Zev Zelenko will be reunited with all Yidin for the coming of Mashiach, something that he believed in and prayed for, and we all do daily in a way that will only blossom and grow. Yehi, Zichre, Oruch, may his memory be a blessing for Klal Yisrael and for world humanity. Amen.